Hello everyone and welcome to ECE 5340-6340, Numerical Techniques in Electromagnetics. As many of you know, Utah is a big skiing destination in the winter. There are 10 world-class ski resorts within a one-hour radius of Salt Lake City Airport. Of course, a big draw for skiers is good quality snow, and lots of it. Fortunately for the ski resorts, during the 2019-2020 season, Ski resorts in Utah saw above-average snowfall. However, along with large amounts of snow comes the risk of avalanches. For example, during a massive snowstorm in February of 2020, there were 48 avalanches in Little Cottonwood Canyon alone, which buried one mile of roadway in up to 15 feet of snow. The canyon had to be closed to traffic for two days. Fortunately, no one was injured by any of those avalanches. However, that is not always the case. Two people were killed by avalanches in Utah during the 2019-2020 winter. Here are some search and rescue people trying to dig out one of those victims. Backcountry skiers, snowmobilers, and snowshoers are all encouraged to carry at least three important pieces of safety equipment in case they or any of their companions ever get caught in an avalanche. The first item is an avalanche beacon which is really just a wireless transmitter. This beacon may be worn under the clothing and the signal it transmits can be used to approximate the location of the person if they're ever buried in the snow. Second, a nine foot aluminum probe can be used to exactly locate the person. And lastly, a shovel can be used to dig the person out. An additional piece of equipment that people can carry is a skier airbag. A skier airbag can help keep someone alive if the person manages to deploy it before being completely submerged in an avalanche so that they can have air to breathe. When people are wearing beacons, one of Utah's several helicopter-based search antennas can be used to search for avalanche victims from the safety of the air. The pilot can search with an effective range of 200 meters. This system dramatically reduces the search time. Once an approximate location of a buried person is determined, nine-foot aluminum probes can be used to exactly pinpoint the buried person. On the other hand, if someone is caught in an avalanche and they were not wearing an avalanche beacon, rescue teams must go through the avalanche shoulder width apart and search for victims by hand. In this case, the number of victims might not even be known. Alternatively, if there are trained dog teams on by, on standby, they may be called in to try to find survivors. A certified avalanche dog can find a person buried in up to 12 feet of snow in 30 minutes. Give people probes and it could take 15 hours to cover the same area. Either way, time is of the essence. People found within 15 minutes have a 92% chance of living, but after 35 minutes, the chance of survival drops to 30%. Although dogs are quite effective, it's not always possible to have dogs on site within a short amount of time, especially in locations around the world where there aren't any trained dog teams. In the beginning of this course, we're going to investigate whether a radar system may be developed to rapidly locate anyone who is not wearing an avalanche beacon and is buried in the snow by an avalanche. We want this radar system to be able to rapidly find people buried in the snow, just as a radar system can be used to rapidly determine the location of an airplane in the sky or a tunnel underground. Ideally, we want this radar system to be usable anywhere in the world, especially in locations where there are no certified avalanche dogs. Take a minute and think about how you would solve this problem today, knowing what you already know about electromagnetics, and also how you would test out your system to see if it works. Write down whatever comes to mind. 